Welcome, this is question number 14 on the grade 5 teen ready practice test. This is subpart 2, we can use the calculator here if we want, we might use one, we'll see. Now, Carol has 8 and 3 fourths yards of material. I've represented it over here with these really bad looking circles that sort of remind me of 1990s X-Men cartoons, but I know that yards of material would be in length and not in a circle, but just stay with me here, this is about fractions. She needs to use one-third of the material to make a dress. How many yards of material will she need to make uh, the dress that she's going to make? So the big issue here is what do we do with the numbers? Now, a lot of times I've had students in the past, and their first thing that they would think to do is add the numbers. But it's rarely ever add the numbers, to be honest, especially at this point. It's probably something else. So we need to think about what one-third of something actually means. So I'm going to start out in a similar fashion but not quite the same. Imagine that I have six of something and I want to know okay if I have a group of six say you buy sodas in packs of six or whatever um, I want to know how many I would have if I had two of those so I'm gonna have another pack of six there so I end up with 12 so I may say six plus six is equal to 12 now, that's fine and dandy when you have a small number, but when you start to get to large numbers of groups, say I had 50 groups of 6, how many would I have? So instead, we're going to reimagine this as 6 times 2, because multiplication is just a lot of adding, essentially. Um, you have, instead of doing it individually, piece by piece, you can group them together and get your answer much quicker. But what happens if we want to look at it from the perspective of breaking a larger amount into parts? So I'm going to stick with the 12 here. I have my 12. Well, say I want to know, okay, if I have three groups, how many are in each group? So I'm going to take this original amount, break it into three groups, and I end up with four in each group. Usually we would represent that by saying 12 divided by 3, because we're dividing the larger group into parts, but we could also look at it in terms of a multiplication problem. So I'm going to zip these away for a second. There we go. So if I start with 12, and remember how we multiplied by 2 to get, uh, we multiplied 6 by 2 to get 12, well I'm going to do something similar. This time I'm going to do multiply. But what I'm going to do is say, okay, I want to multiply it by one whole group with 12 in it, so I need to put 1 here in the numerator. I'm going to use a fraction, spoiler alert. And then I need to know what happens if I break it into three groups. So this 12, rep this 1 here, when you multiply it by the 12, represents the original 12. And then you divide by 3, so 12 times 1 third is also 4. Because if we're to do the math, remember, uh, any number, any whole number is really itself over 1 if you need to make it into a quick fraction. 12 and 1 twelfth are not the same thing, but 12 over 1 and 12 are the same thing. Uh, and then you multiply your numerator, so you get 12 times 1 is 12. And then you do 1 times, multiply your denominators, 1 times 3 is 3. And you end up with 4, because 12 divided by 3 is 4, which we already established. So the reality is, if I have a large number and I wanted to break it into 5 parts, I could divide by 5 or multiply by 1 fifth. Now, that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to take a different look at this. I want to take this larger 8 and 3 fourths and break it into parts. What I'm going to do now is look at it visually and then I'll do the calculations at the end. So if you wanted to not hear the long explanation of visual, just skip on until you see me stop uh, fiddling around with the things. Hopefully I'll remember to put the timestamp in the comments, but probably will not remember. So you know in your class when you're like, okay, you're an A, you're a B, you're a C, and you go around the room saying A, B, C, that whole thing. We're going to do that here. First, we're going to look at the whole numbers of 8 and 3 fourths. So purple, blue, red. Purple, because we've gone through all three of them. We can go back to the original color. Now, that's all the holes that I can evenly distribute. If I circle this one purple and this one blue, and then circle this one red, the red doesn't have as many, so they're not even. So if we're going to break it into three equal parts, we can't do that because this has one, two, three, four parts. This has one, two, three, four parts. This only has one, two, three. So that's as far as I can go. So your original answer, just visually speaking, should start with a two. And now I have to think, well, what am I going to do with this to break it up? One of the things that I could do is just look at them individually. 
So I'm going to take each individual piece and break it into parts. So say I have this piece. So if I want to break that into three parts, I just do this. Now it's three equal parts. So imagine that on all of these. All right, so I went in and broke them all into parts of three, and you're obviously going to have to lie to yourself to pretend like they're even. Obviously, they're not, but I'm trying to not make this filming process take 10,000 years. At least I didn't make you sit there and watch me do it, so just be happy with your life. So I could count up all the spots here. Each one of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now that I'm breaking the leftovers into 12s, I'll end up with 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So what I'm left with is 33 twelves. That's how many total parts that I have. Now, if I was going to do every third one, I'll do this one, one, I'll do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. So each individual one that I have when I break it into groups of three would make it 11 twelfths. And obviously 33 divided by 3 is 11. So this is what I add to the 2, and I get 2 and 11 twelfths. So that's one way you could do it visually. It takes a long time to do it that way, but if you can think of it, you know, that's kind of nice as well. Another quick a, a little bit of a quicker way is to think, oh, we're, we're multiplying together and we're allowed to use calculators. So when I had this left over, let me just do a bigger race here. So I already had the 2 broken out, so we don't need to redo that part. We will in a second redo it. Um, I already have the 2 broken out. And then I would go back to my original points where I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 fourths. That's what we had when we had these three without a billion extra little lines in them, remember? So 11 fourths. There, I stopped it because the, uh, it was driving me crazy. So these three, this is where the 11 fourths comes from. And I'm going to multiply that by one third. Again, remember, multiply the numerator. 11 times 1 is 11. Multiply the denominator. 4 times 3 is 12. You get to 2 and 11 twelfths. Now, is there another way that you could get there? Of course there is. Of course there is. Why wouldn't there be? Um, what you might do is convert that mixed number into an improper fraction. There's a variety of ways to do that. You could count them all. I mean, you can count the number of fours here, and incidentally enough, uh, you'll end up with 35 fours. And then you multiply that by one third, and you get 35 twelfths. And the thing is, you could actually put that answer in there. You don't have to convert it into a mixed number because the problem doesn't say anything about it. It just puts your answer there. Technically, they'll take a decimal number as long as it's a correct decimal number. So if you have, uh, if you don't want to do the counting business or you can't do it because you don't have time, there is one more method that you can do to get there. And there's a variety of ways to explain this part of it, but I'll just pick one that I like. When I was a kid, when we converted mixed numbers to improper fractions, I think they called this around the world. And now my pen's leaky. Which you wouldn't think would happen on a digital pen, but it does. We would do the denominator. So 8 represents groups of 4 times 4. So if I can say that I have 8 of those groups, I need to figure out what 8 groups of 4 by 4 is. So you do 8 times 4, and that gives you 32. And I always put this in a box. This is just how I did it. And then you would add the numerator, because these are the parts you have left over, 1, 2, 3. So that gets you to 35 fourths. And then you can multiply by 1 third. Um, I call this Xbox Plus now, by the way. I know that's not a real thing, gamers. Simmer down. So, I mean, get it. PlayStation Plus is not the same thing as Xbox. It's Xbox Gold or Game Pass or whatever. I, I hear you. Anyway, the X would be the multiplying of the numerator times the whole number. 
the box is me putting the answer up here, and the plus is me adding the numerator. Now, if you can't consistently do that over and over again before you get to test day, don't use that method at all. And you should understand why it works. If you don't, don't bother. It's just a quick method for people who do understand why that works. I'm not going to not show you something just because someone might not get it because it might work great for someone else. Again, 35 over 12. If you wanted to do the division, you certainly can. We've done it a million times, and it'll come back to 2 and 11 twelfths, but you're welcome to put 35 twelfths there as well. So that's it. Question number 14 on the grade 5 math practice test.